Joey, your audio is really soft. I'm not sure why. Let me see if I can. Is that better? I don't know yet. Depends on when you're far away. Is that that better here? No, it's about the same. Here. But it's okay. We can just listen carefully. Okay. I'll just put. I'll just mute myself to make sure that. <laughs> yeah, the computer looks the same to me. At least they had any stickers over um, inputs. Kids, that can happen. That's funny. <laughs> cool. Always look for the physical sabotage. And changing directions. Rolling around that base. Take each part of the foot as you do. The body warms up, gradually increase the circle. And Carol, try to keep her hips a little more square. See how I'm not turning one side of the hip in or out. Everything is flush forward as I roll around that base. Hey, Dion. Hey, Joe. And two more. Good. Stepping out. Hands on the hips, pulling the belly to the spine. As the hips roll back, the body sinks forward, the body raises. Step back straight. For more of a challenge, you can bring the hands to the center of the chest. stance a little bit. The feet a bit wider than shoulder width. Pressing your feet into the ground as the arms curl, sink, back straight. Pushing into the ground as you raise. And elbows drop. Arc to sink, pushing the ground. Raise and press. And continue. How do you get the backward bend on this one? Are you hinging your back or is it just the hips and your back is straight? Good question. So see as the hips come forward, there's a little bit of an arch in the back that's increased ever so slightly by that elbow drop. And the back returns to straight as I sit. Okay. Hips Thanks. come forward. Back down. Okay, three more of those. Here, Galen, and a slightly wider stance will help and bring your feet to parallel on that outside aspect. There you go, good. Good Craig, good Carol. Excellent Chris. Good Karen. And back to standing. Widening the base a bit. The back straight, you can manage straight back, also parallel with ground. Slight bend in the knees, twist. Past your hand, nice and slow back across. Feel that roll through the hips. Turn, slight stretch, and back across for three. More space right here. Two more. Last one. Good. Now we're going to stance a little bit. Okay, hands on the hips. Feet a bit wider than the shoulder. Once again, rolling around that base, keeping those hips square as you do. 
and in each part of the foot as you roll. Good. Once that roll feels comfortable and that foot circle feels nice and complete, then you can add in that body roll around and through. And two more. Good. Back to the more vertical posture. Opening up to the other side. Once that roll feels comfortable, adding in the body drop. Two more. Very nice. Shaking out the legs for a second. Is the volume still soft? Stepping to the side, lifting the heel. Kara, if you please unmute your mic. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and three more. Good. Slightly wider base. Turn to the side, arms lifting. As you twist, feel that twist travel all the way down through your hip into your heel. As the arms pull, they dislodge the foot and draw it back. Nice and slow, try three times at your own pace. Feeling that stretch to lift. Continue. Pushing into the ground, try not to let your head raise up as you kick. Good Karen, good Craig. Excellent, keep that weight rooted over that front leg. Good, let's go for 10 of those together. And E, R, Sun. Try to keep the legs straight. S, Wu, Leo. Chi, ba, jiu, sure. Good, changing sides again a couple times through. Play with that sequence of stretch to lift to back. Stretch, pulling the heel out of the mud, kick to back. Try a couple of those on your own. Good, slow down, Galen. Try to isolate each little area of movement as you roll through your core. Good, Chris, keep that belly draw to your spine. Very nice. Good, Craig. Make sure, Karen, that your leg is straight as you kick. Good, Karen, make sure you're hooking the ankle, Karen. There you go, good. And let's do 10 to that side. And E, R, Sun, Si, Wu, Liu, Qi, Ba, Jiu, Shi. Good. Shaking that up. Let's do 10 squat kicks with straight leg raise. So as I push into the ground, I sink. As I raise up, my grounded leg is actively pressing. My raising leg pushes the heel out, pulls the toes back. So as I raise up, foot raises, right back into sink. You can see my back is straight actively pressing into the ground. I don't want to lean forward and put pressure on my knees on this one. Let's go for a 10. And E, R, Sun, Si, Wu, Liu, Qi, Ba, Jiu, Shi. Good. Right foot forward, left foot back. The front hand arcs to slice. Fingers turn away, reaching forward. Little finger turns away, little finger reaches forward. 
Nice wide extension. Good. Keep playing with that for a second. Good, Chris, Karen. Excellent, Caro, Craig, and Galen. Good. Watching me now. Turn, slice. Turn, slice. Hips turn in, hips turn out. Turn in, turn out. So on an external rotating model. There you go. Very nice. Let's try the other arm for a second again. Firstly, just get it loose. Isolate the arm, get used to that roll. Little finger leading all the way around the arc. Leading forward, little finger leads back. Leads forward, leads back, and then rolls. You can feel the weight of your wrist as the arm rolls. From there, gently integrate that into your hips. Good, 10 more on that side. Continuous roll, Galen, there you go, no breaks. Very nice. And shaking the arm out, looking back towards me. 10 outside crescents. Again, it's the outside crescent. The toe lifts, the heel presses. We draw the leg in, pulling the leg across the center, pulling the leg across the center. Cross one, cross two. Cross one, cross two. Try a couple times to ease the movement. Pushing into the ground with that balancing leg. Good, couple more. Pull the leg across, pull the leg open. Good. Good, Galen. Good, Karen. Eric's excellent. Good, Karen. Craig. Good. So, next loop, we're going to add in the pressing down into the ground with the bracing leg, and then the drawing down to the pair of spinals on the kicking leg. So, again, if I just throw my ankle in a circle, I get that. So, my balance is kind of wonky, right? The leg makes its path, but I can't really control any part of it. If I'm actively drawing down that pair of spinals as I push into the ground, everything balances more. You see how I have structure? I can mildly change the trajectory at any point in that kick. Ever see that difference? Play with that three times each side, pushing into the ground on your ground leg, drawing down your pair of spinals on your kicking leg. Go nice and slow at your own pace. Doesn't matter how high you kick, just try to incorporate those two principles. Good. Very nice, Chris. Make sure your knee is straight, Chris. Doesn't matter if the leg is low. Make sure that leg is straight so you can open up your hamstrings on each kick. That's it, Chris. There you go. Very nice. Raising to the head and neck, Chris. Good, Craig. Very nice, Caro. Good, Galen. That's a great range for you. It's a great range. And Karen, your kicks get higher every week. That's awesome. Good. Okay, so from there, we're going to add in our squat component. Remember, the squat is kind of that battery charge behind the kick. We push into the ground, winding that coil, using that coil to lift and power the kick. The raise from the squat is the initiation of the kick. Let's go for 10 of those. And E. R. Sun. Si. Wu. Liu. Qi. Ba. Sure. Excellent. Shaking that out. So our first arm movement was the front hand swirl. The second hand is an up and over check. So sideways, you can see, I have an extra rotation. Hip opens. Other side comes through. Cuts. Facing towards all of you. Hip opens. Cut. Hip opens, cut. All right, let's play with that together. So again, there's the roll. From the roll, the front leg steps in. As the roll continues, baibu step out, 
as the weight of that front arm carries down, it pulls the other arm up and over, slice. Good. And then from this crouch position, go to the other side. Hand turns in, hip turns in. Step out with the hand, the weight carries over, slice. Good. Hip turns in, hand turns in, step, slice. Round, step, slice. And everyone watch me for a second. I'm going to show a couple key components of this, okay? I'm not just reaching with the arm and catching with the leg. I have a whole circle of the movement, upper and lower. So as the hip turns in, much like in our dragon stirs earth, right, where the hand is being pushed off of the hip. Same thing is true here. The draw in of the hip pulls the hand. See how the hand is turning? So the little finger is once again leading the way. Hip turns out, little finger leads the way to the chest. The foot is also turned out here, opening my hips. The shoulder and the hip are both open. The weight of this arm sinking draws the other side over. As it does, it accelerates, 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 and as it crashes, the first hand is going to raise to guard the face. So again, watching. Okay, from here, same thing. I roll in, hip leads, hip leads. The weight of the arm pulls the other hand up and over. As I cobble with that back leg, slice to cover the ear. Notice how there's still space in my armpit, even as I slice, and there's that round, non class springy quality in my back. So as I roll, I immediately have all of that space to roll through as I come through for the next slice. Does that kind of make some sense? Play with that on your own. Try to stay in frame to the best of your abilities, and I'll come around and make corrections, okay? Kara, straighten that elbow a little bit, Kara. That way you can feel the weight of your hand. If your elbow's bent, you're feeling the weight of your elbow like this. You see me? As the arm hangs heavy, see this big hanging monkey arm here. Waves back and forth. And I roll that arm up and over, and the weight of that arm carries the second one through. But you want that weight more distal in the wrist, not so proximal in the elbow. Good, Craig. The one thing you're missing, Craig, is that heel touch in the very beginning. As you draw in, everything touches and grounds. This is our start point. This is true start. This is finish, right? This is the beginning of a new move. We start with that touch, and from there, everything cascades over. This is the end. This is the start. There you go, Craig. Very nice. That makes sense? Looks good. Looks really good. Good, Chris. Keep that space in your armpit, Chris, and trust your breath. Let the whole cycle take the place of one exhalation. I inhale to here, Chris, from here. Exhale through. Okay? There you go, Chris. Very nice. Now, from there, once that feels good, keep that clavicle knit, and that will give you the space in your chest that you need to not get stuck in your body. Very nice shift, Chris. Good. All right, Karen. Awesome, Karen. That's great. So the one piece I work on here is it's a finishing part of that second slice, right? So if you watch me, you're looking great with that kobu in. The reach is good. I can see you pulling your body over. Now watch my back hand as it comes through. It cuts in the same angle as my back thigh almost. There's a nice good runway here. So I'm not going to land in my leg. It's right side. There as I cut through. Okay. okay, cool. Yeah, that makes sense. I could feel that like I'm having trouble getting my front foot in the right position. So it makes sense that I'm like not tracking the hand correctly. <laughs> Watch the foot back. So I roll back. The correct position is in line with the fingertips. See the foot and the hand in the first arm side are both in the same direction because this is the follow through. This is a check. If I can borrow Fritz for a second. Can I borrow combat Fritz? Thank you, combat Fritz. So if combat Fritz throws a punch towards me and holds her punch out here like this, the first hand is a check. I'm not trying to cut through. I'm trying to maintain that contact here. As I drop that hand through, the second hand rolls through for the strike. And so it's check control, slice to cut. <laughs> Thanks, Fritz. Thank you, 
turns. All right, so again here, the foot turns in, the hand and foot go the same direction on that first step. And now as I step through, the second step is a closing step. And see how the hand now travels in front of that second foot into that open space, still spacing the armpit. Everything opens, check, cut, check, cut. Good. I think I'm, the problem I'm having that, I think I'm getting the first step in the right position. I'm just having trouble like on the second step when I'm like thinking about drawing my hand in and all of that, I'm having trouble remembering to actually step forward far enough with my front foot. I'm like sort of ending up in the start position again, like crouched up instead of like with a strong strike. So I think I just need to focus on that. Right, so we just hit on this one more challenging point for movement for everyone here. The hardest part is getting from that open into a relaxed coil. It's easy to collapse. It's hard to relax into a coil, right? This is a relatively easy movement. There's nothing that can't be challenging from of a roll to stop. Drawing through, cutting, but maintaining the potential energy in the hips of that turned in. This is really pretty hard. Super easy to collapse, right? Super easy to draw in here. Really hard to draw into an elastic base that propels you out for the next strike. Does that distinction make sense to everybody? How can you kind of challenge? So as you play with this, take your time. Remember, this is just that arc to reach. I'm reaching for the offending limb. I'm catching it. As I roll through, I'm cutting, but it can't be a stop. I need enough coil to begin the cycle anew on the other side, okay? Keep playing with that a little bit. All right, Galen, let's take a look. Good, Galen. The first cut's looking great. Good. So the second one, watching me. So this part's looking awesome. Pulling with that front hip. See how my hips are turning in around that arm? As they turn, that turn becomes Kobu. And that braces for the strike. And so that turn in from the hips guides that second hand towards its target. So open, feel that Kobu before you step. Yeah, then Ko. Good. Think Ko before you move into that space. Open by. Pull from the hip, think co, form co with the arm. That's it. You feel that elasticity now? Exactly. If you think from your hip first, your hip can guide you. If you think hand first, your hip will always be behind. Yeah, very nice change. Keep playing with that. Yeah, nicely done. All right, Margo. Good, Margo. So the first thing to work on is making the wrist the heaviest joint on the arm. And so as you roll, it's like a you know, six-year-old doing a window, right? You want to feel that weight of the arm rolling through. There you go. And as you watch me, from that weightedness, I just follow that roll around and through in the beginning. That's the idea. And now you want that second arm, that same kind of weightedness to it, right? Not moving from the elbow, moving from the wrist. That's the idea, Margo. Good, feel that difference? Very, very good start now. Yeah, keep playing with that for a second. All right, Carol, let's see it. Good, Carol. Good, Chris. Let's see one, Craig. Very nice, Craig. And that's coming, Karen. That's coming. And so, Karen, the thing I showed Galen is now true for you. Watching my hip here. See how there's that big roll in the hip to out, right? And that supports my by move. As I go into that closing Kobu step, I want to lead from that base. The hip is already closing. From here, I just follow that line that gets already describing in front of itself, and there's that cut through. Okay, so focus more on coiling than cutting even. Right, well, it's a back and forth, right? It's cut for a while, then coil for a while, then cut for a while, yeah. and eventually <laughs> all kind of become thing. Right. <laughs> There you go, Karen. Very nice. I think that really helped. <laughs> that was huge. The next little bit, keep the weight a little bit more back than front. Oh, okay. <laughs> you watch me, so if I go side to against. No, I, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, a bit more here. Yeah. There, yeah. I'm, I've been just trying to like not have my foot curled in, so like, I, yeah, I think I was overcompensating, okay. but I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, there's a billion <laughs> you all at once. You're all doing great. Good, Margo. Very nice, Margo. Two more like that, and then we'll go on to the next kick, and then we'll finish the sequence up. That's great, Margo. 
Good. So Margo, next little thing. Each cycle begins with a gather. Gather, cut, cut. Gather, cut, cut. So you find your balance and then follow things through. Find the balance, follow things through. There. Is that pulls you further? Very nice, Margo. Very nice. Okay, everyone do one more. We'll do our inside crescents. Chris, that's looking ridiculously better. Yeah, I think like it, like um, the advice that I've heard you talking to other people about is getting out of your elbows and like um, into the wrists, creating that weight, that stretch. It's really, really helpful too. So I was trying to focus on that as well. Nice. And if everyone knows his Caro has a good way of doing that by adding physical weights to his wrists. Um, so again, there, there are lots of ways to play that principle. The only advice to give to Caro is don't move as fast as weight Caro because I can jar the joints behind it until you get really kind of accustomed to it. Good. Let's do our inside crescents, and we'll add in the third and final movement of the sequence, okay? So again, for inside crescents, it's more of a balance and knee strengthening exercise than the previous two kicks. So as I raise those toes up and draw across, I'm reaching, balancing, and then stepping back. I'm wiping off the table, holding that leg, balancing, and then step. If this is too much for my knees, I'll show from the side, if that much of an angle is too much for my knees, I might just kick to there, right? Reach a little and back. Reach a little, and back. Over time, the vast medialis and lateralis, the two quadricep muscles, will develop and support. You'll learn how to root better. You'll be kicking across your body in no time. But at the beginning, listen to yourself. Kick in a range that feels safe and feels productive. Very nice. Straight leg. Everyone do three more. Very nice, Craig. And Craig, as you kick, kick to hold. Kick, hold, set. Kick, hold, there you go. And that hold is where stabilization and strength building really comes in. It's like a cartwheel and holding the leg two inches off the ground before you drop it down. That's the real work that comes in. Good. Let's do 10 squat kicks with this. Everyone ready? And E. Hold and sink. R. Sun. S. Wu. Leo. Chi. Ba. Chio. Last one. Sure. Good. Okay, watching me. So we have the first split, the first P. Second split. And now from here, raise into a throw. So again, Fritz is vanished, but she were here. I would check her hand, slice the top. Catch underneath, throw her over. She's here. Can you, can you hold your hand up? Thank you. So there's, there's my good. Check, cut, then from there, come underneath and throw to the side. All right? So you're throwing her over your thigh? Yeah. Cool. Just right over that thigh. Just <laughs> off and back. Thank you, Fritz. So watching me again. One, two, three. Coil. One, two, three. Now watch my chest angle in the third strike. Everything's rounded. As I hit, see how everything is still rounded. I'm not hyperextending into the throw. I'm staying in the range of that great big circle that I'm holding. Does that make sense? Yeah, so the, the coil action at the end of that um, strike is, is uh, holding power to, to make that last strike, but we don't want to overspend it. Right, because you still have to recycle just enough to get us back in the cycle to the other side. We don't want to ever come to a true finish. We always want to draw right back into the next. So going together, like me, there's the touch to start, step, to check, pull the hip to cut, draw from the middle, and see from that middle, there can be a little bit of movement in that front foot as it steps, sink, 
to throw. And you see how my weight is dynamic, right? I'm not leaning into that front foot. I'm pushing into both legs as I roll through. Let's play this together. Outside foot rolls out. Inside foot rolls in. See the hand on that back side crosses. The hand on the front side is guided. And then carry through. Back hand and foot cross. Front hand and foot are guided. Back hand and foot cross to strike. Now, real quick side note here. This is the identical leg mechanics that we have with our dragon stirs earth, right? The back side, which is this side here, crosses, 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 crosses. The front side is led out by that front hip. Everyone see that? Crisscross back, cross, cross, front lead to push. Same thing here. Cross, cross in the back, lead to push on the front. And so very different movement in some ways, but the mechanics behind it are, the, are analogous, okay? So let's start with that back arm. Cross, 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 cross. Hand high, leg pushes out, hand low, leg pushes in. You can start with like a teeter-totter. Push one side, push the other, push one side, push the other. Once teeter-totter makes sense, then you can start to make it a circle. Right now, the hip is rolling in three dimensions, not just on a plane. We get the exact same thing, crossing high, crossing low, crossing high, crossing low. A little side note, never be afraid of teeter-totter if it gets the movement into your body, okay? It's always okay to use training wheels as long as you recognize it, no matter where you are, there's always a level deeper to go to. Good, a couple more on that. Good, Margo. So Margo, watching me as I roll, the leg is gonna push out, the hand pushes in. The hand circles, the leg pushes in, the hand pushes out. Hip circles outward, hand passes high, hand passes low. Hand passes high, hand passes low. There you go. If you're feeling good on one side, give the other try a side as I come around and give you all a little bit of help with this. So Chris, feel as comfortable to have as grand of an arc in your chest as you have in your pelvis for this, okay? So as you cross, see how it's a great big space up top Compresses towards the belly at the bottom. Great big space at an angle as I reach up. Everything compresses an angle towards the quad. Propelling from the quad, drawing to the quad. Extending from the quad, drawing to the quad. There you go, good. And you get that bigger arc, it adds more movement to the shoulder, more flexibility to the ribs. You feel that? Very nice, Chris. Good, Kara. Hand comes in, leg goes out. One. Good, hand rounds the belly, leg comes in, hand goes out. There you go, hand comes in, leg goes out. Hand goes out, leg goes in. There you go. That's the engine. Very nice, Carol. How's that feeling, Craig? It's looking pretty good. Making some sense? That feels good. It's also, um, uh, I find in here, uh, having a, the feel of the weight of the torso, like when we do our hip circles and you drop the torso, the, the, the drop, that really helps because uh, just feeling the weight of your arms is a little inadequate <laughs> when you're crossing that much distance. To feel the weight of the torso too seems really to help me remembering that, that dip. Yeah, movement. yeah. The whole body roll. Huge. But you can dip without dipping. <laughs> right, but the dip is still part of the idea. Good, Margo. And as you reach again, see there's weight to my arm, the weight's in the wrist. The weight of the wrist carries the hand down. I lift the weight of the wrist through my arm, and the weight of the wrist passes the leg. And so a shorthand be that I'm clearing with the palm of my hand, that back aspect of the palm of my hand, but I really want that feeling of heft 
in the extremity as I'm propelling it up and drawing it in, propelling it up and drawing it. It's heavy. It takes all of this counter movement to get it up there, and the weight of it coming in is kind of that power center that provides the shock to that striking arm. So the more weight and heft you can put in that arm, the more powerful that charge becomes. Does that make sense? And part of how we work on that is by not overbending the elbow. Again, if you watch my arm, because I come up here, there's no real point. So there's a bend, but it's very round. It's never an angular bend. The bend is only that of the natural arcing of all the structures, starting that knitting of my clavicle, extending around through the blade of my hand. I'm not bending any more elbow than I have to to follow that arc that starts in my middle and whips this whole arm, this whole structure around as I move. There you go. Good, that clap moment is so important because it guides everything that goes all the way through into the fingertips. Very nice, Margo. And Galen, see so you do a couple? No worries. There you go, Galen. That's looking great, man. Nice work, nice work. And Karen. Good, Karen. Leg presses out, hand comes in. Leg presses in, hand goes out. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm coordinating it correctly. <laughs> so let's go together. Can you face towards me? Or like, is this good here? Cool. So from here, should I call this my right hand or should I call it your left? Uh, I'm just going to mirror you, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> arc, the hip rolls out. On the inward arc, the hip is coming behind and then forward. So this is the backhand that you're doing, right? Correct. Okay. Would you mind doing it on the other side? Because that's like I was using this as my back. Yeah. Like it's a little actually it's a little confusing when you're facing me because then it's harder to tell which one's your backhand. <laughs> Does that make sense? Absolutely. So, okay, so your 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 left side is your front side, is that right? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no. This stuff's complicated. I'll do two more and I'll turn around check in. One. So that's different from what I thought you were showing, because I thought you were showing that your knee is going out when your hand goes in. But your hand and your knee are moving together. On the front hand. On Which the one? Hand, across, <laughs> across, across, across. You see? Hand presses yeah. in, leg presses out. Hand presses out, leg turns in. I think I'm just going to let this one go for now and like loop back around sometime when it's fresh. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a complex one, but it gets really fun. And so everyone watch me for a second. From here, right, I have that roll in, and this roll is an external rotation. There's that roll. There's that first part of that check out. I continue that roll in my hips, right, roll, roll, and that roll is what carries this arm through. Then that roll in the hips is what carries through the subsequent strike. And so at speed, it looks like I'm traveling in a straight line. But in reality, each part of that movement is predicated by that roll and release in the base. For not that base, it becomes this. And you see how everything is just locked up here and it feels super uncomfortable in my shoulders because that's all that I'm using. If I can take it on that base, really complex hand movements, like, you know, multi-angle hand movements, can all follow a very gentle, either external or internal base roll on the hips. Does that kind of make sense theoretically? Yeah, totally. Awesome, awesome. And so let's do, let's do four of these together. We've done a lot of this. We do, I will lead everyone through four of them, then we'll change gears. And we'll touch us again in the classes to come. Sound good? So we set up, turning in, that turn leads to a heel touch. Stepping out, check. Continuing that roll, slice. Continuing that roll, throw. The roll draws the front hand in, feet touch, roll out to check. Continue that roll, slice. Continue that roll, throw. Two more. The roll continues drawing us in, feet touch, 
step out, check. Pulling through on that base, slice. Rolling through on that base, throw. Last one. Drawing in, step out, slice, throw. Very nice, everyone. Get a quick sip of water and we'll continue in just a moment. One of the classic Song Pham Pao Chui shoulder opening techniques. But more than that, it's a shoulder and hip coordination technique, which really makes it really fun and valuable to play with. So I promised Caro that this week there'd be some pouch wet. And there is. This is one of my master Wang Chi's favorite warm ups in the morning. You'll see him after he does his opera singing, which he likes to do. Just kind of rolling down the training ground, just sliding back and forth. He's a list of maybe a dozen line drills that he does every day. And this is one of the more dynamic and interesting. We'll add a couple more in the classes to come. Any questions before we continue? Yes, Margo. Yeah, just, uh, sorry, just to get the, at least the first hip roll clear in my brain. When, so what you're doing is like, if you were doing a figure eight, and then here you slide in. Correct. And then you're trying to arc out open. One hundred. Okay. Correct. Okay. I can work with that. <laughs> so yeah, right. Just so I can illustrate, so it's on the camera for the video I post online. That roll yeah. Yeah. Right by the hip. You want that hip to pull the arm, right? The hip comes in, it draws the arm with it. The hip steps out, it draws the arm with it. You see how there's a very slight delay between the hand and the foot, but. Both of them terminate at the same moment. The foot gets there first, but see how the movement stops upper and lower at the exact same point? But, but at that moment, the, um, the hip feels pretty unnatural when I do that arc open to, to settle the, the first foot out. Uh, that's normal, no? Or dynamic. at first? It's a dynamic pull. If it felt natural, it would be a soft, dead movement. Which has uh, to mm -hmm. make sure there's enough of a draw from here to carry us into the next shape. If it felt too comfortable, there wouldn't be that vector in our body pulling us into the next form and into the next form. So what you're describing as discomfort um, in the end becomes kind of a like a street sign of where your body can move next. Okay. Does that cool. make sense? Yep. Thanks. Of course, if it's actually painful, tell me we'll address it, but like you're a mild yeah. quite centered. Yeah, and again, one last little point, like I was telling Chris before our class started, from four of the old way, another classic example of each one of slicing and going through. There's a kobu to press, stepping through for a stab, and the first movement is an arcing of the spine back. Right? I put my pivot point behind my body here, which is going to carry me around to that mm. slice. Were my pivot still in my hips, like here, I could cut, but there's no way in hell I can bivou around comfortably for that next hit with a 180 degree movement there. Right? I need mm. that 90 degree cut here to give me space to step behind for the next opening of the slice. So, that's so interesting. <laughs> yeah. So no, that's it. really interesting. That that would give you. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. And one last example because it's fun. The same thing's true with swords, right? Ridiculously big, heavy swords. Because as I come through here, right? So the sword can turn. The weight of the sword carries me around that center point. The weight of the sword carries me through into that next shape. It's not exactly comfortable, but it's dynamic and focused. And so wow, yeah. you have to have even the balance and movement. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, great question. Really good question. Let's do a little bit of work with our qigongs leading into fixed eight, and then we'll finish with some kicks today. Does that sound good for everyone? And we started five minutes late. Is everyone okay going five minutes over? Yeah, cool. If you need to run, totally cool. So. Yeah. Yeah, we owe you that five minutes. <laughs> How dare, Karen? <laughs> <laughs> hey, it wasn't me this time. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Carol and Chris and Craig, I mean. How dare. Uh, I'm blaming Karen. <laughs> <laughs> it usually is me misbehaving, but not this time. <laughs> <laughs> Spread it around. <laughs> <laughs> and so for holding chi, we're going to start with just that gentle lift. And then as we lift, we're going to allow the body to straighten on that inhale. And then that exhale, as we press down, I want to make sure that as I press, I'm lifting that head neck up, relaxing that tailbone down, pressing, 
and gently splaying the arms. It's like I'm rounding an object, not doing a dead press. So again, the hands come in and then round and arc out. And notice as I press out, there's that slight curvature to the back as my belly draws to the spine, right? A round quality of my spine, round quality of my shoulders, roundness in my hips, and a very obvious roundness in my arms. As I lift up, everything relaxes on a big inhalation. I can even push the chest forward if I really want to get the opposite movement in there. And then as I exhale, there's that pressure to creating that sphere. Good. Inhale, relaxing up. As we come down, the exhale takes over as we press through. And so it comes to our hold. So we hit that hold, we turn over to an inhalation as we raise. Continue that inhalation as the hands come up and over. Once the hands turn, we begin our exhalation as we press and lift our head back. Good. Joints fill as you inhale, or the joints stretch as you exhale. Good, okay, continue a couple times. Remembering our hand position. Equal space between the fingertips, stretching the fingertips out, not walking but a constant dynamic stretch like you're pushing something over with the tips of your fingers. The four fingers reach, the thumb crooks in just a little bit. Good. Very nice, Galen. Paying attention to the space in your wrists as the hands come through, feeling that stretch gently opening on that outside of the arm as you stretch. Very nice, Galen. Good and very nice, Chris. In that last bit of the movement, there's a little bit of opening. Like you're pushing through something that then leads to the relaxation of the lift. There's the sink and that little bit of push to open and a little bit of kind of martial filling. Or if something were to hit in, we create that elasticity to push back to it and then raising back up. Good. I'm going to do two more of these. Very nice, very nice. Now as we go into shouldering the mountains, we're gonna add a new part of the game to it today. As we raise up, there's gonna be a moment where the elbows are almost touching the side body. You can see how it's not here. It's kind of, the, there's that space in the shoulders, that knitting of the clavicle, and that's giving that space to the chest. So there weren't that knitting of the clavicle, there'd be that collapse in here. So that space in the shoulders pulls the elbows away. As I sink to raise, I wanna feel like the tip of the elbows, that olecranon, has little hooks into my back, and I'm drawing that stretch into my back, stretching deeper and deeper as the hands go out. So the more I reach, the deeper in my paraspinals I have to draw. If I'm here, it's a very, it's a very gentle support, mostly in the lats. As I extend out, that stretch goes deeper and deeper into the middle, stretching down towards the sacrum, as I support my hands with all of this drawn from the elbows. Good. Relaxing. See the hands curled up again, that exhale. The elbows arc in and stretch out. Relaxing down. The hands lead, my elbows arc in and stretch, drawing down my paraspinals as I draw through. Gather, stretch.
gather, stretch. Good, fingertips drawing through, pulling those elbows away, creating that stretch down the body. Good, couple more. Arc. Stretch. See, my palms are parallel with the ground. Shoulders are heavy, chest is concave. Good. A couple more. Very nice, Galen. Slow down the reach out the hands enough that you can feel that stretch really linking body region to body region in your back. There you go, Chris. Chris, watch my elbow. It's hard to see. See how there's that out to in to out to in. Out to in. And then there you go. This is where you want to hook and carry from. There you go. Relax, hook, carry. There, every time you pass in, you're, 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 you're latching into your back, and you're attaching to a wing, and then pulling that wing out. Does that make sense? Exactly there. Yep, exactly there. Nicely done, Chris. Good, Margo. It's looking good. There you go, scoop. Good, feel the elbows latch in right about there, and then carry that sensation out. Very nice, Margo. Carol, your posture is looking superb. You're making some really good changes with those weights. Very nice, Carol. And Karen, I like the use of the ball. That's awesome. Yeah, they're nice and heavy, too. Yeah, good. They look it. They look it. I can see how it's changing the musculature as you lift them. It's the Mary Few um, two-pound. I love these. <laughs> two pounds is about perfect. I, really, I started out with one-pound weight gloves. Now two pounds are far more effective. Anything beyond that is, you know, effective to a point, but becomes showing off very quickly. <laughs> Well, these are just nice because you can lay on them too. And they're, I like them better than a tennis ball to lay on. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome, it's awesome. And good, Craig, make sure your fingertips are leading the way. There you go. Okay, so the last couple of weeks before we get into our kicks, there's the scoop to out, hey, chain. Scoop to press. Scoop to shoulder mountains. Scoop high to hold chi. Scoop low to raise up. Scoop high to press down. Good. Now adding in the breath. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale to exhale. Inhale to exhale. Good. And continue at your own pace for a few more moments. If you press, feel that press down, opening the back, creating space in the spine as you sink. Feel that lift up, linking into your side body, stretching through those paraspinal muscles as you draw out. This whole back and forth should be an opening and closing, opening and closing massage of your spine. In the end, it's the shoulders that stop hurting and the back that becomes actively engaged and can actually become quite sore as you more effectively kind of draw and dig into these tissues. Good, everyone, do four more at your own pace. Do some kicks and we'll call it. Okay, any quick questions before we do our end of class kick set?
Well, I just noticed when you paired the breath, breath there that like, I mean, I was already aware that we're like rising up and lowering like partway through some of those motions. And like, I was trying to track that like with my brain previously, but now it's really clear that like, if you're raising up, you're inhaling, if you're lowering, you're exhaling. And like, so if you get, if you can figure out the timing of either one of them, they reinforce the other. <laughs> right. And the secondary cool thing about that is that once you get that sequence and that pattern down, you stop thinking about it and it ceases to be one of the three things that you're thinking about. Because again, <laughs> I really don't believe that anyone can think effectively about more than three distinct things while practicing Gong Fu at any given time. <laughs> so the more so you can make kind of just rote and automatic part of your practice, the deeper you can dive in with your thought process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Any other comments? That's awesome, Karen. It's looking really good. It's looking really nice. Thanks. Good, Margo, good. Sweet. Let's give it a go. So, watching me, my toes, so my front foot opens just a little. My toes lift on my back foot. From here, I step up and over, toes touching first, and watch first. I'm going to drill into that foot. So, again, even rotation and pivot in that rotation. See how it naturally raises that back leg? And I continue that rotation in that grounded leg all the way through the press. I want to feel a stretch in the top of my butt, and then I pull from the inside of my hip, following that rotation all the way around. And so what's really happening here is from that touch, everything from the kick to the return is continuing that arc around that front <laughs> foot. Does that make sense? <coughs> Moving exactly in a line with that pivot. Let's give that a try, okay? We're going to do three each side. So the toes lift on the back foot. That back foot steps up and over. I want my toes to touch first because that little bit of springiness guides me into this turn and it's all go together. Relaxing, pulling into that hip, pull into that hip to stabilize. The pivot draws up the back leg. The pivot turns through. As we reach, feel that stretch to the top of the hip. Pulling from the inside of the hip as we continue. Around and down. Good. Let's try the other foot. The front foot turns out just a little. Lift the toes of the back foot. Step. Pull the weight into that front leg as we drill. Follow that drill into the hip as the back foot raises. Continue that turn. Feel that stretch in the top of the hip. Stretch the leg. Pulling from the front of the hip around and back. Good. Let's see y'all give my try on your own. Front foot turns just a little bit. And step. Good. All the way around and through. Excellent. So watching me, watch my do together. Back toe lifts. I come through. As I turn, See how it changes the shape of the kicking leg as I turn into it? Now that foot's primed to lift. The, the kicking knee is slightly behind the base leg. I use that turn in my base hip to extend that kicking leg out, reach until I feel a slight soreness in the top of my glute, and then draw around and back. Good. One more for everyone. Give it a go. Last one. Taking your time. Very nice, Craig. Good control, Craig. You see, Craig, how that gets into your belly a little more? And there's some really neat things. Yeah. Very nice, everyone. Keep taking your time with these. Good. And so now, if I want to throw a full speed kick, I can step, drill into that hip, pop, there's the kick, and see how on my base point, I'm not going to stumble because I'm so used to following that pull around my leg. If I don't pull into that leg, there's a lot of stumbling to find my balance as I complete that turn. There you go, use that heel press. Do you like Karen? Yeah. <laughs> awesome, good Craig. Very nice Chris, that was gorgeous Chris. Good Caro, very nice. Yeah, that's it Galen, good. Okay, so to finish up, let's do our five wall kicks, we'll call it a day. The hip draws back, forward, 
down, up, and back. Two. Down, up, back for three. Down, up. Good. And now for five, we kick out. Down, up. And now five little oscillations. One, two, raising from the hip. Three, four, five, around and back. And switching legs, same exact thing. Heel comes back, pivoting, kick, down, up, back. Two, down, up, back. Three, down, up, back. Four, down, up, back. Five, and for five, we do down, up. And then five little bounces, lifting from the hip. One, two, three, four, five, and back. Awesome job, everyone. Thank you all so much for coming today. It's great to see all of you. Um, any questions before we call it? That was great. Nice work. Yes, Margot. 